Welcome on back to Skipper's Day. We are doing three must-draft outfielders. This was going to come out yesterday, but someone decided to rear-end me on the highway. So that, unfortunately, delayed a couple of things. Tomorrow, we are going to have the League Winners video going out. And then next week, we get regular season baseball. I'm guessing everyone's going to draft kind of early next week. So all my must-draft things, um, players to avoid, are going to be out before then. Do not forget to subscribe. Let's get in to the three players. First player I like is Michael Harris the second of the Braves. His ADP has him uh, at 34 last year at 293 average, 18 home runs. He only drove in 57, did steal 20 bases, and had a weighted runs created plus of 115. I think he's one of the best fantasy baseball players at the turn uh, at the end of the third round going into the fourth round. And one of the reasons I think he is so valuable is for categories league and how much he is going to hit for average. Last season, he was over a 305 expected batting average guy. And I think he has a lot more power to tap into and top of the league sprint speed, which should uh, lead to more than 20 stolen bases. My thought when I'm drafting, if you take a high upside bat, but it's more a guy who's not going to hit for average, say Pete Alonso. Francisco Lindor, Ellie De La Cruz, you should pair him with a guy like Michael Harris when uh, in his high floor when it comes to batting average. But again, I think there is upside there for more power. The worst and best part for Michael Harris is that he hits uh, ninth for the most part in the Braves lineup. Bad for us because it limits the amount of bats he gets over a full season, but really good because he technically hits in front of Ronald Acuna Jr. and those great uh, Braves Middle of, the, middle of the order, guys. Michael Harris hasn't come close to hitting his ceiling, and he's still only 23 years old. He did hit his sophomore slump, and that was early on last season. He had a weighted runs created plus of 37 in March and April last year, and a weighted runs created plus of 47 in May. But he followed that up by four consecutive months of a 167, 112, 137, and 123 weighted runs created plus the last four months of the season. Looking at what changed to make his numbers decline last season was he had a crazy amount of hits on fastballs the year before. It was an unsustainable rate. He had 346 against forcing fastballs in 2022 and then 308 against them in 2023. But reasons I'm not worried about that is he actually had a 25 point increase on his expected batting average against those pitches. And he had a lower whiff rate on them and increased exit velocity. So that was just kind of a baseball thing. He was getting so many hits. Uh, I'm sure the BABIP was crazy on the 345 in 2022 year. And it would just regress to what should be normal numbers uh, in 2023. Michael Harris has a max exit velocity in the top 10% of the league. Top of the league in expected batting average. Chases a lot but is above leave average in whiff percentage and in his K rate is still uh, really good. Top 15% in hard hit percentage and expected slug. There's a lot of extra base hits in Michael Harris's profile. He just really hasn't found them yet. He is still a really young hitter. He can tap into the power. He's going to hit a lot more home runs and maybe even bumped up in this order at some point. I think Michael Harris is a safe pick and someone I like taking in my fantasy baseball drafts. The second player is Riley Green of the Tigers. His ADP has him going at pick 140. 49. Last season, a 288 average, 11 home runs, only drove in 37, stole seven bags, and his weighted runs created plus was 119. Riley Green took a huge step forward last season without putting up the counting stats for people to care about him, I think. And in turn, that gets us a big discount on him after the 10th round in your drafts. Riley Green played less than 100 games and still put up an OPS plus of 117. He ran a crazy high batting average on balls in play, and I think that's because a lot of his batted balls are in the middle of the field. I wouldn't mind him going pull side a little bit more to hit home runs, but his average upside is great, and that's top 8% of the league. My favorite stat, the best thing to say about Riley Green, is a stat uh, called people in the industry call expected damage, better known as expected weighted on base average on contact. And that is a number that has Riley Green in the top 4% in all of baseball. He is making fantastic contact, but his average launch angle is 6.6 .6 degrees, which I will take because the year before his average launch angle was only 2.8 degrees. His expected damage was better than Corey Seager, Luis Robert, Bryce Harper, Matt Olson, and Freddie Freeman last season. Hunter Green was top 20% of the league in the following stats, expected weighted on base average, expected batting average, expected slug, average exit velocity, barrel percentage, hard hit percentage, 
and sweet spot percentage as well as being top 30% in sprint speed. The tools are there. The hit tool is definitely there. And I was shocked when I saw the advanced numbers from Green. Again, he's also a 23-year-old and has a super high ceiling. Him and Torque should carry this Tigers offense this season, and I'm ready for a full season breakout from Riley Green in 2024. Finally, the last player, Tyler O'Neill of the Red Sox. His ADP is 226. 231 average last season, nine home runs, 21 runs batted in, five stolen bases, and his weighted runs created plus was only 97. This is more of a personal play for me, where I think this player is better than some of the numbers would tell us. And I love Tyler O'Neill's fit at Fenway. When the Jays were looking at some players that to trade for in the offseason, I thought he would be an awesome guy to pick up, but I think he goes to a better spot. The problem with the Red Sox outfield is they might have gone Yankees mode, and their outfielders have too much muscle. Having Jaron Duran and Tyler O'Neill on a Giancarlo Stanton injury path might not be good. But as much as I'm kidding, the thing that has hurt the most has been Tyler, Tyler O'Neill's ability to stay on the field. He has not been able to do that. The only time that Tyler O'Neill has played more than 100 games was in 2021, and I think he's into his fifth or sixth major league season. In that 2021 year, though, he hit 34 home runs. He stole 15 bags uh, when they weren't even at a premium then and put up a weighted runs created plus of 143. The surface level numbers were not impressive at all, but he did improve some things in his profile. He posted career bests in strikeout percentage, walk percentage, contact percentage, and zone contact percentage, and it, while still maintaining a good hard contact percentage of 43.3%. Looking at projection systems, I don't use those a ton, but for a guy that I think has a ton of upside, I will take it for this reason to tell you guys. They have Tyler O'Neill as a 25 home run, 80 RBI, 10 steal guy, and that would make him a huge steal at this ADP. He has a good walk rate, 10.5%, so he should be good in your OBP formats as well. Barrel rate was top 15% of the league and a pretty good chase rate. Sprint speed is also top 20% of the league and he's a pretty good base dealer. As we saw when stolen bases weren't a premium a couple seasons ago, he was still stealing 15 bases. The Red Sox aren't going to be great this season, but O'Neal is going to have the playing time and opportunity to put up big fantasy numbers. And I think he easily outperforms his ADP this season. Thank you to everyone watching Must Draft Outfielders. Let me know what you think of my three picks. Who are some guys you love uh, at their ADPs that you think can outperform them? Thank you for watching Must Draft Week, and I will see you guys tomorrow for League Winners.